Well, I went on a Sunday morning, stood in line for more than an hour, and then finally began the trek to the top. 387 stairs in all, but for a singular view of Paris and a journey through the heritage of France. This is the Cathedral of Notre Dame. Almost 850 years old, it's an architectural masterpiece. From the gargoyles overlooking the city to the soaring arches, it helped change architecture forever, ushering in the Gothic style. Even if it's better known from Victor Hugo's novel, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, which, by the way, played a pivotal role in the cathedral's history, but I'll come back to that. Because real people do work here, I mean, dozens of them every day, like Jean-Pierre Legay, one of the three organists. They're considered among the best in the world. He's been here for 25 years. And Claude Bouchard, who has a small shop nearby, he's been coming at dawn every Friday for 35 years. There are sacristans, guards, and volunteers, and many of the choir members were trained in the cathedral's own school. Yet, of the 30 to 60,000 visitors who may come here in a day, that's more even than the Eiffel Tower, nobody really knows if they're drawn by the story of Quasimodo or maybe seeking something more. We have no idea how many people get it. They, they just, uh, something happens when they come into the church and they realize it. I mean, they, they walk in, they walk in as tourists, they walk out as pilgrims. Michael Perry is an American priest from Brooklyn who spent every summer here for the last 17 years. And through his eyes, you can see past the flashbulbs and t-shirts to realize that this really is a church. And we all know that our purpose for being here is not to maintain a historical monument, but to maintain a presence of a tradition that goes back to Jesus and is a presence of compassion. The priest who brought me here 17 years ago when I asked him, what the rules were, he said, to help people leave in better shape than when they arrived. In front is a marker, a reminder that for centuries, all streets in Paris, at one time all roads in France, led here. The cathedral is a symbol for many French, as powerful as the Statue of Liberty is for Americans. According to the cathedral's chief administrator, Philippe Lefebvre. Um, because in the memory of the people, in the life of the people, it's the place and the church where they can be together. One example was after the crash of Air France Flight 447 from Rio to Paris. If it's a tragic event, and sometimes we can see that event in the TV, one hour after, thousands of people are here. In fact, the cathedral's equipped with closed-circuit TV for overflow crowds. And every August 15th, thousands line the banks of the Seine for a procession celebrating the Virgin Mary. But once the congregation leaves the church, the choir stays behind, singing not to an empty cathedral, but you see those microphones? They're actually broadcasting live to radio trucks in the street. So the cathedral may be old, but it's not out of date. When it was built, churches were squat and almost windowless, but the bishop who commissioned Notre Dame wanted it filled with light and reaching to the heavens. The problem was engineering a structure that could withstand the enormous weight of its lead roof. And because it's so heavy, it puts pressure down on the wall and the wall would buckle out. They needed some way to brace the walls, and the solution were these towers called flying buttresses. And so the weight from the top comes through, the, through that rib mm -hmm. into these towers that are here. And so the, the weight of the, the, um, the roof is dispersed. It not only allowed them to go higher, but to open the walls for the great windows. The only thing that can weaken the structure is water. And that was solved by a spectacular system of drain pipes. And they go into the back of the gargoyles. And then the gargoyles spit the water out because the word gargoyle comes from the French verb to gargle. And when the water's coming out, it sounds like like that. 
And that's why they made them into monsters, because it sounds like the monsters talking. Yet, for all its splendor, over the centuries, the cathedral began to lose its significance. You can still find scars from the French Revolution when people saw it as a symbol of oppression and took swipes at it with axes and hammers. It was also used as a garage. It was also used as a place to store arms and to store, uh, store chemicals. And this is where Quasimodo enters the story. For by the 19th century, the cathedral was in such disrepair, people wanted to tear it down. Well, enter an architect named Viollet le Duc, who was so determined to save it that he enlisted the help of a writer friend named Victor Hugo. And says, Victor, I need you to help me because you can write well. We need to defend that church. Which is why Victor Hugo wrote the novel, which we've come to know as The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Read chapter 14, nothing to do with Quasimodo or the gypsy girl Esmeralda. No, it's a rapturous description of the cathedral. And those 10 pages saved this church. So Quasimodo's legacy may be one reason to climb almost 400 stairs. Just don't be dismayed that the bells are now rung electronically. And the only one open to the public the Great Bell, Le Bourdon, as it's known in French, is only rung on special occasions. It's so heavy, more than 13 tons, that it can actually shake the tower. No, there's lots of people who just, I, I had an experience one time, a long time ago, when uh, this woman showed up at the, at the front door of the church uh, with her cousin Camille. I'll never forget the woman's name. And she said, uh, and Camille said, come on, let's go in. She says, nah, you've seen one, you've seen them all. 